Welcome to the Berea Podcast. This is Troy. And this is Stella. And this entire episode is a call to action. So prepare. This is some exciting and fun stuff. We are in our studio. More on that in a later episode. But we have a guest with us in the studio. Allie Blair, please introduce yourself and your capacity in Berea and everything. Hey, uh, Troy and Della. Thank you all for having me on today. I'm Allie Blair, and I am the um, Levitt Amp Berea Project Lead. Gotcha. Because last year, Mm -hmm. Berea was one of 10? 15. 15. Okay, 15 cities that were selected to have an outdoor concert series. Yes. So what Berea was already doing was the first Fridays of the summers, and they augmented that uh, greatly. Right. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. I don't actually know the history of how the Levitt Amp got here the first time. How did that work? Well, we had been doing um, First Friday Berea since 2014. We approached the Tourism Commission um, with an idea to throw a block party down in Old Town, and um, they gave us some funding. We did three months. They gave us additional three months funding mm-hmm. and had a successful first year. We came back and did that two more years. And the third year, uh, tourism had adjusted how they approached their grant funding process. So we had a significantly l- smaller amount from them. Um, a lot of community support mm-hmm. helped to make that third year happen. And we also had five events that year. It's a super fun. I mean, just even First Fridays is super fun. We go down a lot. And the first year we moved here, we went there right before school started, I think it was. Right. Do you remember? And our daughter did karaoke with the library. Yeah, the first yeah. Place. It made such a great impression on her. So it's a super fun. That in itself is a super fun event. Wonderful. We feel the same way, and we didn't want it to go away. We wanted to make sure that that stayed. But we knew that we needed financial support. And uh, fortunately, I had already heard about the grant from the Levitt Foundation, um, but we had missed the deadline the year before. And the first year that we did it, we weren't ready. There were a lot of partnerships that you have to have in place, and we were a brand new event. Mm -hmm. So it worked out that it was like, let's apply for this. So we worked with the Arts Council, who had already been a partner of ours. They'd been serving as the fiscal sponsor for First Friday Berea. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were like, uh, as the arts organization in town, this would be a great project. They were actually looking for uh, doing something like this, and it had already been on their radar as well. So it was like it it came together. We synced up. And then we worked with tourism, the city, and the Berea College Entrepreneurship for the Public Good Program. Mm. Um, I had seen Dr. Hackbird's students present uh, when they first started Trail Town stuff, and I was like, how do we get involved with that program? And so uh, they came on as a partner. We applied for the grant. And there's a voting process that happens that helps you get into the top 25, and then up to 15 awards are chosen. So we did this last year. It transformed First Friday, um, First Friday every Friday. Mm -hmm. Um, It elevated that series, as well as looped in what Berea Tourism had been doing. They had concerts in the park in August. So we were able to loop that in with our series, elevate that, and just have 10 Friday nights in a row of music, Yep. community gathering, and all the things that people really liked uh, about being able to come down for First Friday. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the, the background, the administrative part of it. Because well, you don't know all that goes into it. I no, think. that was <laughs> before was like, the first. It's a lot of planning before you even yes. get the first, you know, concert person. That was amazing. Concert mm-hmm. person? <laughs> what do you call those people? Performer? Fans? Singer? <laughs> singers. <laughs> <laughs> Some people will call them singers. Oh. Uh, Artist, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Let's... We need those people who stand on the stage, right? Got, right, they got an instrument, so okay, right. but uh, so I love you know, the administrative part had to happen, but what really was great and what drew us downstairs, downstairs, downtown on top of the music was that sense of community and the, the people that we saw. Uh, do you have some stories about the, the event and? you know, throughout the summer, things that, you know, really impacted people? Yeah. Um, Well, the Arts Council had, um, they kind of launched this thing called Berea Rocks. Right. Um, Right. I think it was at the first uh, event that we had this last summer. Mm -hmm. So they set out tables, and this is happening, I guess, all over the United States and other communities where people are painting rocks 
uh, and then hiding them for people. Um, so you find them as you're walking around, and it almost becomes a game, uh, a bit of a scavenger hunt. Mm-hmm. You take them and you leave your rocks, you know, and hide them for other people. And so they set that up, and that became a really wonderful um, event for people. The kids came really excited, and they knew that it was going to be set up every time, and and they were really happy to be able to do that. And I can't remember how many hundreds, how many pounds of rocks that the Arts Council actually purchased over the course of the oh. summer, but a lot. So well, it was, I yeah. Think we've seen those, and we know we have neighbors of ours that mm-hmm. were very excited about that little project. Okay, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that that was that gives us uh, a lot of things to think about for the next year, mm-hmm. like how we can do kind of interactive community art and and things that really draw parents and children together uh, in in a crafting kind of way. Right. So it'll be fun. under the guise of an outdoor concert. Under the guise know? of an outdoor concert, yes. I think that there were lots of conversations that happened. Um, with people being able to sit around. Uh, it was great to see that people started bringing their chairs fairly quickly. Uh, it, we, we only have so many chairs that we can borrow from tourism and parks and rec. Mm-hmm. So people brought their chairs and their blankets. And as the series progressed, we saw that when the music ended at the end of the night and we started cleaning things up, there were pe- still people sitting on blankets, people on benches, mm-hmm. people in their chairs for another 45 minutes or an hour after that. Mm-hmm just enjoying their conversation and being able to, to gather. Um, and then probably one of the, the most fun things for me is to see how the children just completely took over the streets. Yeah. They did. Right? It is, I think it's such a metaphor for what, <laughs> what we need <laughs> more of. Um, and the fact that they felt free and that they felt safe and that families felt safe that the children could actually go be kids. So there were skateboards and scooters mm-hmm. and there, uh, I think there was a box of kittens uh, at oh, one point yeah. in time. Yeah. Um, kitten we had, juggling? Yeah, no, no kitten juggling. Yeah. I think kittens trying to find a new home. Oh, nice. um, but there was a, a whole group of teenagers that kind of took over right in front of the Broadway building mm-hmm. and everybody just hung out and it was really great to see that and We had bubbles a couple of times, a couple of the events. I think we'll bring those back um, more frequently this next year. Uh, The smaller children really love that. So it it was really great to see that just uh, it's very intergenerational. Um, I think every week that you looked out at the crowd, you got to see, you know, all these different people connecting. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily people that may find themselves in that kind of a situation on a regular basis together, right. which is what's really important and really kind of at the heart of why, why we're doing this and the intention behind it from our our point of view. Sure. My real story connected to exa- what you just said a second ago, a friend from college, you know, is here in Berea as well. And I saw him like on the street. He was coming back from getting kettle corn. He had his bags of kettle corn. We started to talk, and he said, though, that he couldn't talk long because he had left his his kids, his younger kids, like sitting you know at the front row on, on their blanket, yeah. excited. And they were at an event where they felt that they could leave, you know, their children there yeah. for a little bit. And the kids, you know, I, was, I glanced over, and they were loving the freedom and the playing, you know, of mm-hmm. right there. Uh, creating that kind of event is something that's special, you know, that and you don't get that every day. Another uh, thing that I. I particularly appreciated first Fridays are great. And, you know, it's an event that you can plan for and go to, but when it's every week and it has the dependability of being every week, you know, Mm -hmm. people could hear about it for two weeks and come to the third concert and then get hooked. You know, when it's just, when it's something more than just monthly, Mm -hmm. I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. We did a podcast about the Love Amp series. Did you know this? I well, did. I listened to it. Podcast. Yes, I did. <laughs> Maybe people would listen to what's going on at the council meetings, right? So I the- love the civic <laughs> engagement. Like, push it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and now you can, you know, maybe it'll engage you on the others. So yeah. That was, that was very fun. Bow ties, fun bow ties versus monsters. rock stars. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and then seeing how people are actually introduced to our community. So not just people who live here and and who maybe we are working and playing with, but people who are coming. Um, There was uh, one couple who they had planned to be here, I think it was a week, and they ended up staying. I think they made three concerts 
Yeah. They stayed t- two full weeks, but they got here right before the first concert started, the very first one. And they loved it so much that they extended their stay and they came down. Um, he was in a motorized wheelchair. And so they would park, be the first person to park in the parking lot. And at mm. five o'clock on the dot, they would pull up under the tree and, and set out their seats and, and watch everything get set up and then enjoy conversations with many people in the community. And as I've been at several different meetings and kind of people sharing you know, their experiences, this one couple has come up. Up in multiple different conversations. And so there are people who were there and they found out where, you know, they were from and why they were traveling and where they were headed to next. And then they're like, oh, well, if you all are here tomorrow, you should go to Native Bagel and check out, you know, breakfast oh, there. Sure. And so they went there and they ran into the people that they had had seen the night before. So what a great way to introduce our community to other people Mm -hmm. as they're traveling through. Just through conversations. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ellie, another story that I have was the creation of the way you had it structured. There wasn't just a headliner and the uh, person that was the the warm at back, they were, they were local. Right. And then there was a, a warm up for the warm up, and it, those were actually kid vans, right? Yes. We and somebody that I work with was in a band that was one of those, and okay. they practiced and rehearsed, and they took it so seriously, yeah, uh, for their their moment in the spotlight because there are lights and there are you know a crowd there to play for. Uh, I love that. Yeah. Right. Talk talk about that that decision process. Well, earlier on, as First Friday. Um, there were youth acts that wanted to get involved. And so uh, I think it was in October of that first year, um, or maybe it was the second year that we said, let's do a youth spotlight. Maybe it was the first year, I guess. So we allowed, uh, I think it was five or six different youth acts to get and have performance time. Um, Families really love that. Schools really love that. Their their friends came out. And we really loved being able to have those folks have an opportunity to participate as well. So when we were looking at how we were going to approach this, I said, let's start with a youth act at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And, um, and had already kind of had that decision uh, made. Mm-hmm. And then there was a community member who on, on a Facebook post uh, soliciting feedback about how we should approach the events said, why can't you approach this like a mentorship uh, a bit oh, for them. Yeah. And so in that was kind of our intention behind it. You are with sometimes these are nationally touring acts that they're mm-hmm. opening for. So they have the opportunity to meet those artists. Some of those artists had management and wow. and they had access to green room area and to hanging out, you know, with the sound guys and the other bands on the back of the stage. And then they, you know, could share their art, their music with the community and help us draw in another circle of people who are coming down and finding out about the events. And then they have this really great opportunity to be able to to be in a professional setting and deal with all of the different elements that they would need to. And we brought in not only people here from in Berea, but from Lexington as well. We had several youth artists that came down from from Lexington. And we actually had one of those fathers of one of the band members um, in a rock band from from Lexington who said, we're really appreciative that you are making this opportunity available for our kids Mm -hmm. because in central Kentucky, um, there are not many opportunities for them outside of a bar to be able to be playing. Mm -hmm. And so for them to be able to come to this kind of an environment, it meant a whole lot to to him as a parent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. You, you don't get much better feeling than yeah, that kind of a thing. Right. So, And they're really talented, really, really talented, which is great being able to show that, that, oh, you're in high school, but you have the passion that someone much older than you can recognize and appreciate, and you're trying, you're practicing, and, and trying to get better at your craft, and, and we're just one more little spot that you can showcase that. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Any other examples of community development that happened while the concerts were going on? Well, we tried to use the events, kind of build on what we had done with First Friday with being able, um, since we have everybody gathered, 
can we bring in community service organizations to use that as an outreach opportunity? And okay. so each each week, um, we had done that monthly prior, but each week we introduced another organization to the community, allowed them to have a booth, um, do any kind of activity or fundraising that they gotcha. wanted to. So those are nonprofits that are serving the Bree area? Yes, that, absolutely. You know, they have a table opportunity to put their name out there. Yeah, okay. and to get up and, and talk about what – what uh, what work that they are doing and how they're impacting and how you can get involved. Um, nice. And then we also partnered with Grow Appalachia's uh, summer feeding program. They were able to, they actually approached us and said, we would love to come and provide snacks and food for for children wow. at the event. Mm-hmm. And so I think three or four of the first events while I was still during the summer program, um, they came and set up activities right. and gave yes. out, gave out, they brought snacks the first time. And then they were like, we're bringing whole meals uh, the next time. Cause there right. was such a demand for it. Mm-hmm. So we were really happy to have them as a partner as well. And then we kind of took this off site and extended, um, three of the events uh, and also held things on Saturday as well because we partnered with the Permaculture Action Network. Okay. They are a national organization and they have regional uh, East Tennessee or I guess uh, Tennessee and uh, Kentucky is one of their regions and they have organizers here and some of those one of those folks uh, Leah Van Winkle was actually working with me um, over the summer and they uh, partnered with the summer feeding program Grow Appalachia and the Glades uh, Community Garden mm-hmm. and right. um, and they uh, had three different uh, action days where they had yoga in the morning, they had a potluck, they had all these different skill shares and workshops, and they were able to bring in people to help do work to the garden and be able to teach as they went along. And so the way that the organization works is they have nationally touring acts that partner with this organization. Um, Rising Appalachia, who we featured uh, a couple of years ago, they are part of the Permaculture Action Network. And so that is something that we're going to be doing more of in the coming year. Uh, when when we get this grant and and uh, do this thing again for year two, we uh, will be looking at maybe another site that needs uh, some infrastructure and and some bodies, and be able to connect with another community, uh, another neighborhood in need, mm-hmm. and and bring them an opportunity to put their hands in the dirt and grow their own food and, and learn a little bit more about some of those things. So super, so pers- those all sound like great reasons we really want this back this summer. Right. Don't you think? I agree. And how can we do that, Ali? What can every listener that listens before November 20th do to make sure that this comes back next summer, 2018? Well, the Levitt Foundation, a significant part of the application process is community support. This is considered seed money uh, on their end, $25,000. It actually costs a good bit more Mm -hmm. than that to put on 10 different concerts. Um, And so they want to see that your community is really engaged and that they really want this. And so the way that they measure that, one of the ways that they measure that, is this online voting process. And uh, the number of votes that you have and helps you get into the top 25, which you have to be in to be considered for the award. But the more votes that we get, the better off that we are and the more community support that we are demonstrating. But you don't have to live in Berea to vote for Berea, which is a really exciting thing. So you can engage your family, your friends, people who maybe went to college here and have left, anybody Uh who has ties to Berea, anybody who cares about free live music for folks can vote for us and help us bring this back for year two. Good deal. How do they vote? Start. It, well, put the website out there for us. Yes. And then I want to actually do that on my phone here. Okay. So the website is grant.levittamp.org. Okay. So I'm getting ready to type. And is that L-E-V-I-T-T-A-M-P? Correct. Grant.levitt. L-E-V-I-T-T. Mm-hmm. Amp. A M P correct dot org, and then what was after that? Um, if you forward slash okay voter v o t e r hyphen okay registration okay hyphen page. And you have a link to this someplace. People can also just go link to this. Yes, right? yes, we have. We've created a custom Bitly uh, URL for our 
uh, Berea page will take you right there. Oh. And you can also, there are three or four different ways to get to the place to, re- to register. But if you've never registered before, you have to register. then you first. have to register first. So that um, grant.levittamp.org voter registration page is what you're going to. Okay. I have it up in okay. front of me. There's and a little then, video. Yeah. It looks like I can connect with Facebook if I have a Facebook thing. So I'm going to click that. And then it's doing its usual stuff of Facebook's talking to the Levit Amp website and then coming back. So give me a second sure. to click through. And this is all just following the directions. Yes. It's all spelled out on the on the page. And we also on yes, the first. Y'all make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm glad we're going through this, though, for maybe just a few people that have a little trouble navigating those things. Not me, of course, but anyone else that may be. Right, right. Um, well, you know, it, it does take a couple of steps to get to that, to get to the point where you actually cast the vote. Well, and it's what that's doing is actually showing that it's a real person and yes. not, you know, some a spam bot from yes. anywhere. So once you once you get there, then you're going to sign up for an account. Okay. And I believe that that's your name, zip code, email address. Right, we'll but I think Facebook moment. takes care of all of that. Oh, okay. So if you do it through Facebook, it says this is the real Cup Oh, day. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Twitter, yeah. Right? So because you're doing it real time right now, right, Troy? Yes. So it doesn't take that long. Fantastic. Right. Yeah. So here we go. And I'm still typing. That's because you've got a great big... I've got ham hands. <laughs> Little bitty thing. But I, I wanted to say about the Levit Amp. So, you know, I didn't know all this history, and I've just always thought, well, of course it's called Amp because you need an amp when you write it. <laughs> but I bet that has nothing to do with it, right? Actually, Amp stands for Amplify Music Place. So it's sort of related. Sort of, so yes. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yes. It would end up being someone's last name. And I thought, yeah. what a coincidence, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's AMP and it's about music performance, so. Yeah. It's a community, or a creative placemaking uh, endeavor, basically, from the Levitt Foundation. The Me- Mimi and Mortimer Levitt Foundation. Their names are Mimi and Mortimer? Mimi and Mortimer. I love those names. I love, I love them, too. I love names. <laughs> So I love names that tell a story. Like, yeah. I just think Mimi and Mortimer, there is so much history in those names and in those probably they're probably family related. I mean, I just love, you just hear so much about a story there. So yes. I, I love those names. And they've been very integral to supporting live music and free and accessible music. Not only have they been doing this Levitt uh, grant for... This is the fourth year coming up, 2018 is, but they also have permanent Levitt pavilions Mm. in um, six large cities now, um, and I think they're building four more. Maybe they're fixing to to open one soon, but those have 50 weeks of live free music for their communities, yes. Wow. And are they outdoor pavilions? They're outdoor pavilions. I think the weather there would have to be sunny, you know, sort of. Temperate climates, I think. Did you get it done? It did. When you get up there, while you were over talking, I went ahead and did it. And Bria's like some of the options. There's a radio button over to the left that you click on and vote. And that's it. Yes. So, yay. That's how long it takes. Yay. You you can have a wonderful conversation as you do it. Yeah. This is, uh, it's listed under Berea uh, because they're listed by the city. Right. But then if you go to the proposal, it's under the Berea Arts Council name. Oh, okay. It's listed as Berea Arts Council on the actual page that you get there. Alrighty. So people can look for both of those things. Okay, great. Good deal. Good deal. Well, Ellie, thank you so much for being. Anything else that you want to add, or is there a way people can get in contact with you? Yes. A um, couple things to add. You can vote once per email address. I have three email addresses. So you can vote three times. I have three email addresses. There you go. There's okay. six votes right now. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, and so you can do that. Um, again, like I said, you don't have to live here in order to vote. So please tell your share that information on Facebook. I share it via email. By the way, I'm not sure everyone knew. That. Yeah, I think that is great. Yes, mm-hmm. and and uh, some people were confused that it was a daily vote. It's not a daily vote. We, they just there's a three week time period to cast your vote. Gotcha. So 
we have until the 20th, and that's 8 p.m. our time on the 20th is, is when, when the deadline is. Okay. So please share it. Please let everybody know. Um, let's try to get as many votes as we can, uh, and hopefully the Levitt Foundation will like what we have done and decide to give another injection of money and support into the Bria community so we can do this again. Super awesome. Is there yeah. a Facebook page for this 2018 series? You can go to the First Friday Berea page. That's where our network was. That's where our, our folks were, and we have just kept everything there. There's also information, of course, on tourism's uh, site, on Berea Arts Council site, on the firstfridayberea.com website, you can find a lot of information too. But if you go to the Facebook page for First Friday Berea, that's where all of the the latest updates are happening. And you um, can follow a link there in case people didn't get all of right, that. And go to go vote. There, find the and link to click and then follow the directions from yes. there on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And um, if you want to get in touch with us, you can yes. do that via that page or firstfridayberea at gmail.com. Or reach out to the Arts Council because uh, Gwen and Diane at the Arts Council are integrally involved at this too. Great. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you so much for thank taking you your time. All. And again, you are our first guest inside the studio. I feel so privileged. I, and I'm really excited about this project, no. just so you all know. Like, I, I stopped you all taking right. your daughter to school oh, one God. day and screamed out the window that I was really excited about, about the possibilities for this. I think it's a really important thing for Berea. So oh. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. So until next week. Bye. Stay is why I stay.